If you want to be the coolest guy at the Outback Steakhouse when you're with your group of friends talking about how getting old sucks, well, you're going to learn something pretty new that you can share with those guys over that bloomin' onion. First thing you probably want to share is you shouldn't be eating the blooming onion. But anyhow, what I want to talk about today is a very interesting thing surrounding dysfunctional mitochondria. Now, sounds really weird and random, but it's actually pretty basic when we get down to it. Now, this video is going to kind of go up and down in complexity. I'm going to talk about complex things and then I'm going to make them really simple with analogies. So don't get discouraged if some things kind of go over your head for a little bit because I'm going to bring it right back down. Okay, with aging, one of the things we really have to see and that we're starting to understand in the research world now is that the mitochondrial content of our muscle dictates a lot of our longevity in a lot of ways. Now, what that means is the number of energy powerhouses that are in our muscle. And the cool thing is there's ways to increase that. So the mitochondria is like little nuclear power plants that are all within our muscles. And what they do is they take fats and they take carbs and they turn it into fuel. They turn it into ATP, which therefore triggers a specific kind of a cross bridge that causes a muscle to contract. Okay, now what does this really have to do with longevity? Well, when you think about it from a longevity perspective, energy manufacturing is everything. Okay, so if you take a look at like a nuclear power plant, for example, if that nuclear power plant is running efficiently and everything's working just fine, then things are great. But the moment that you start getting some leakage or you start having some problems with that nuclear power plant, it could literally end the world, right? Well, the same kind of thing is happening within our body. Now, we have specific types of muscle that are called type 1 muscle fibers. Okay, these type 1 muscle fibers have a higher amount of mitochondria in them, which means that having more of these type 1 muscle fibers could potentially mean that we have more nuclear power plants. A good thing if they're all running efficiently. A bad thing if they are all leaking. Now, how does this translate into real life? Well, let's dive into it a little bit. Before I get heavy into how it translates into real life, let's look at a study published in the journal's Gerontology. Okay, it found in subjects that when mitochondrial enzymes and mitochondrial DNA were increased, that translated into more mitochondrial content and more mitochondrial capacity. What does that mean? That probably went over the head, right? It, it did me at first, but what that means is that when we do things like cardio or fasting or eating lower carb, things like that, that can increase these mitochondrial enzymes. And what this study shows us is that an increase in these enzymes directly translates into actually having more mitochondria. So what that tells us is if like, we're not just set with the kind of muscle we have when we're born. Like we used to think that, oh, this person has more type one, they're gonna be an endurance athlete. No. If you do things like cardio, you can change your mitochondrial content. So that's step one. You could do things like cardio, fasting, occasionally restricting carbohydrates, uh, stressing your body in ways where it has to create more energy factories. But let's talk about the aging piece because this is what we're really here for. The longevity and aging equation comes down to a balance of two things in all actuality. At least that's what the research is starting to point to. It's a balance between what's called mitochondrial biogenesis and something called mitophagy. Mitochondrial biogenesis is the formation of new mitochondria, building a house or building a power plant from scratch. Mitophagy is the recycling of your existing mitochondria to make it better. That is remodeling or refurbishing the power plant. Two totally different things. Building a new one versus refurbishing are two different things. The problem is, is as our mitochondria become older, they start to leak reactive oxygen species. They leak oxidative stress. They leak damage. And that causes problems. That's stress in our body. So this imbalance of mitochondrial biogenesis and mitophagy is a problem. For example, if our mitochondria are already damaged, we don't want them to go and produce new mitochondria from that damaged DNA. It's like taking a contractor that is terrible at what he or she does and asking them to go build a bunch of new factories. They're gonna do a cruddy job. So you're gonna have this be replicating cruddy factories over and over and over again. And that's a big problem. 
and then you only have so many good contractors that are able to refurbish. In essence, it would be better to have a contractor that's good at what he's doing come and refurbish the factories than it would be to have a cruddy contractor go out and make new ones, right? You'd rather live in a nice house than have 10 really cruddy ones that are falling apart. Now this all has to do with the fact that as we age, we start to downregulate something called AMPK. We also downregulate and have less of what's called SIR2 and 1 activation. So to put it in simple terms, it's sort of like a software engineer. This thing called PGC1A, the PGC1A pathway, is a software engineer. And that software engineer is good at what he does. But AMPK, that is his keyboard. And SIR2 and 1, that is his screen. And if you take away the keyboard, you take away the screen, the PGC1A pathway is still there, the software coder is still coding, but he can't see what he's doing. So what's he coding? He's picking a bunch of dysfunctional mitochondria again, right? So that is why having like a good, healthy process is so important. And we need to limit the reactive oxygen species, which is where mitophagy comes in more. So as we age, our existing mitochondria become really inefficient at using oxygen because you have less efficiency to what is called the mitochondrial cytochrome C oxidase or COX. This is where oxygen consumption happens in the mitochondria. And when that is dysfunctional, then you create a bunch of electron leakage. Okay, and those electrons leaking, that is reactive oxygen species. Those are oxidative stressors. That causes a problem. So before I get into more stuff, let me say something very important. There was a study that was published in the American Journal of Medicine Okay, I took a look at over 3,600 people that found that muscle mass was a huge predictor of longevity, specifically the ratio of muscle mass to total body weight. The more muscle mass per pound of overall body weight equaled more potential longevity or less all-cause mortality. So what are we gathering here? There's a few things. Cardio to increase our endurance, increase our mitochondria. Fasting reducing food to increase our mitochondria because it gets better at scavenging fuel because you're not eating as much. Periodic restriction of carbohydrates, but also resistance training to build muscle. A larger muscle has more space for more factories. But again, more factories are not always good if they're dysfunctional. So what can you do to increase mitophagy, to increase the recycling, the remodeling? Well, there's some interesting stuff. There is something called urolithin A. Now, in no way, shape, or form do I want the net impression of this video to be, you need to go out and get urolithin A. Okay, just living a healthy lifestyle and fasting is really good. But there's some interesting data on this urolithin A stuff. There was a study published in the journal Cell Reports that took a look at something called MitoPure, okay, which is the patented form of urolithin A. Okay, and they gave subjects placebo, or 500 milligrams, or 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A, MitoPure. They found some pretty interesting results. They found a 12% increase in leg strength, leg muscle strength over placebo, and an additional 9.8% in 1,000 milligrams over 500 milligrams. Okay, well, what else? They found increases in endurance significantly, reductions in C-reactive protein, reductions in overall inflammation, but here's the real kicker. Total muscle mitochondrial content increased significantly, as well as proteins that were associated with mitophagy. Now, urolithin A comes from pomegranates, but not everyone can synthesize it properly. So there's a company I put a link for down below called Timeline. Now Timeline uses the MitoPure technology that was in this specific study, and it's pretty cool because up until recently, there really hasn't been concrete evidence on a specific flavonoid or compound that could potentially improve mitophagy specifically. So I put a link down below. You can go to timelinenutrition.com slash Thomas and then use code THOMAS to save 10% off a different variety of products that they have, ranging from capsules, they have like a berry powder, they have a whey protein shake form, which is perfect if you're doing sports and you wanna be able to have that afterwards. Definitely recommend you try it because urolithin A is a very interesting compound and the way that they use it with the patented technology is very, very, very cool. So I put a link down below and there's another study that they were in that I'm gonna reference in a second, but I need to come back to something for a second. Remember how I mentioned there was a reduction in inflammation? Okay, this is super duper, 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 duper important. As we get older, there is something that is more commonly being known as inflammaging within the research community. Inflammaging is the inflammation that's associated with aging. As our mitochondria become older and more decrepit and they don't work well, 
they create more dysfunctional DNA. They offshoot dysfunctional DNA. Our immune system tries to deal with the dysfunctional DNA. It tries to do what it can. Our innate immune system says, I'm going to try to fix this and get rid of this dysfunctional DNA. Well, in an effort to do that, you have a heightened immune response. As well as a bunch of cytokines that are being elevated, you also have formal peptides that are elevating. The increase in these peptides, as well as the inflammation in cytokines, that alone triggers consistent inflammation. They're called damage-associated molecular patterns. These damage-associated molecular patterns are the constant grind of inflammation that happens as we get older. And it may sound like just noise when we talk about inflammation, but you're talking the achy joints, the brain fog, the fatigue, the stiff back, the just melees, the lack of wanting to do anything because, duh, your immune system is trying to fight something. It's a big deal, right? So that's why when we see that potential decrease in inflammation alongside an increase in mitophagy and mitochondrial content, we can speculate based upon that research that that reduction in inflammation is probably a result of more efficient mitochondria having less overall waste equaling less that the immune system has to deal with. It is a huge thing. So let's recap for a minute and then I have another study because again, this is such important stuff. So when you're talking to your friends at Outback Steakhouse or Sizzler, if you still go to Sizzler, you need to remember a few things. Okay, building muscle should actually be priority. Build the muscle, build the house, and then condition the house. If you have muscle, I hate to say it and it sounds so cheesy and boring lifestyle, do cardio. The zone two, zone three cardio at 50 to 65% of your maximum heart rate, three to four days per week. You won't burn up all your muscle. It'll make your muscle better. More mitochondria content in that muscle. Okay, I want you to try skipping breakfast or skipping dinner. Do some stage of intermittent fasting two to three days per week as just a general rule. Another thing that you could do is one 20 to 24 hour fast per week, okay? Another thing that you should really try doing is try cutting off your food around like 6 or 7 p.m. So you give yourself enough time overnight to rebalance circadian rhythms. This can make a big difference, okay? Now an interesting piece, adding BFR training, that is like occlusion training. You ever see those people that put those bands around their arms or their legs when they're working out? Well, this occlusion training can actually increase mitochondrial content and it can help increase your lactate threshold, allowing you to do more and lift more with a lighter weight. So basically you, or I shouldn't say lift more, but you get more of a metabolic muscle building effect with a lighter weight. I've done videos on that, so you can be sure to check those out. Just type in Thomas DeLauer BFR and you can find plenty of content on that. Now, there was another study that was published in the journal JAMA that looked at this urolithin A stuff again. Fascinating stuff coming from pomegranates again. They found two months of urolithin A at 1,000 milligrams versus placebo led to, once again, increased endurance, increased mitochondrial content, and reductions in inflammation after just two months. Okay, there are some differences between that study and the four-month study, but the bottom line is that this urolithin A stuff is fascinating. So again, I don't want the net impression to be buy this product, but since they are a sponsor on this channel as well and you can get a discount for them, I definitely recommend you check them out. But I think I gave you plenty of lifestyle tricks outside of that. It's just all about sort of hacking our way to understanding how our body works. I'll see you at Outback Steakhouse tomorrow.